Let's continue our conversation with former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick about ending a 20-year chapter, rebuilding our great city, and his candor on the person who helped him become a free man, former President Donald Trump. You go to sleep and you, you dream about one day being the mayor. This is what it feels like. I'm having a ball. This is uh, what it's all about, bringing the entire community together. Man, we look deep within ourselves to reach out and rise up. What are your thoughts on former President Donald Trump? <laughs> well, you know, I'm twofold on that. And, uh, you know, one, well, no, I'm just actually onefold. Uh, I don't believe there's a greater thing that you could ever do for anybody than to set them free. Whether that's from a physical prison or an emotional one or a mental one, I don't care what it is. Um, he, with one stroke of his pen, eliminated a 28-year sentence that was hanging over my head and I walked out of prison. And so I thank him immensely. Uh, I wanna meet him, I wanna shake his hand, I wanna talk to him. I've sent a letter, I've tried to, cause I think it's uh, deserving. I'm not as emotional about politics as people in the streets. Did you have any idea he would commute your sentence? I didn't have a realistic idea uh, that you would call real, but I, I did have a faith idea. So for Donald Trump, uh, all I can talk about is what he's done for me. Uh, and, you know, I know it's a lot of people out there doing some other things and picketing, but hey, nobody else got me out of a cell and gave me freedom from that prison. And that you will perform the duties as the duly elected mayor of the city of Detroit, according to the best of my ability, so help me God. I will. Congratulations. Kwame Kilpatrick served as mayor of Detroit from 2002 until he resigned from office in 2008. Then his corruption trial would follow, sending him to prison for 28 years. The scandals, flashy lifestyle, his affair becoming public, all played a role in the fall of his political career. I lied under oath at a civil disposition, deposition for the brown Nelthrop lawsuit on October 11, 2004 in the city of Detroit. Although you were convicted, do you feel you were treated unfairly in the public eye? I, I just can't talk about it being unfair. I think it was necessary. Um, you know, I, I was so angry at Channel 2 and 4 and 7 and Free Press and, and the reporters, and I'm just not anymore because uh, <laughs> it was pretty good that I was afflicted. And uh, I don't know where I'd be if I would have just been able to keep going like I was going. Um, and so I needed all of that to sustain the strength, the confidence, and the courage that I have now in proclaiming the Word of God. I don't believe that I would have the tenacity that I have for it, but for all that I went through. And so, no, I know a lot of people think it was unfair and this was, you know, they pronounced a 28 year sentence on me and people say, that was ridiculous. Well, I didn't do it. <laughs> so did, did I deserve it? I don't know. You bring up an interesting point, Kwame. With the last 20 years, and there's a, a saying, everything happens for a reason. Is there a hidden gem with the outcome of the last 20 years? Absolutely. Um, I thought my purpose in life was to be mayor of the city of Detroit. From the age of 10 years old, that's all I ever told people I wanted to be. I didn't want to be president. I didn't want to be governor. Uh, I, I wanted to be mayor of the city of Detroit. I wanted to be like Coleman Young. <laughs> you know, I met Coleman Young at 10 years old, and that, that was what I thought my destiny in life was. The hidden gem was that that was never the place that I was supposed to spend the rest of my life. And I want to tell Detroiters that. I know they thought that I was supposed to be there forever. Uh, it was never the place that I was supposed to be. I was supposed to do exactly what I'm doing now. What do you say to the people who would still elect you today? <laughs> tell them that I'm not running for anything. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't believe that, 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 that that's, that's where he has me. I, I, I would rather them uh, I would rather do some workshops uh, on how we need to have less emotion during the electorate process and really understand that politics is a contact sport and what that means and how we engage it. What are your thoughts on gentrification in our city? Gentrification. It's a topic right it now. It is. The issue is the involvement of the people who've been here. It's, it's not really who's coming. 
It's the people that's been here the whole time wanting to be a part of the movement forward. The people on Carter and Joy Road and Puritan and Wyoming and Finkel. Hey, then you saw the drive. Yeah. Oh, right the drive. <laughs> East side too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I to do something. Grass shit. Uh, <laughs> cash you. Uh, <laughs> I got to throw some East Side. Harper. Yeah, let's throw some East Side. Van Dyke. Okay. I had to throw some East Side. I'm sorry, East Side. Uh, you good. know where I'm from. I know, you know? I know, I know. Yeah, I'll Dexter, Linwood. <laughs> right. So, but the people from those areas. They are so excited to see what's going on in Detroit, and they just want to be a part of it. And I think that is the, the balancing act of growth. I see a lot of the things that Coleman Young and Dennis Archer and Kwame Kilpatrick put in place in this town um, as far as a footprint and a blueprint and a foundation of development is really manifesting right now. And so right here on Living North, you know, this is an amazing um, outgrowth of conversations that were held in the office and what we should do and all this. And to see it now is absolutely dynamic. Kilpatrick and I wrapped up our conversation with this exchange of dialogue. The name Kwame Kilpatrick is a powerful, polarizing discussion. How do we bring closure to this discussion to end this 20 year chapter so you can move on because you are a human being, you are doing something new with your life. And for anyone who's on opposite end, for you, against you, bring this to a closure and we can move on. And so I need people to understand that love me, I'm all right. I mean, thank you for your prayers because I'm all right. And those people with the vitriol, it's not me that you're mad at, it's not. And what we need to do is try to figure out how we heal the hearts of those people. This can't still be about a mayor guy. It has to be about you now and how you move from where you are now to where you truly believe you gotta be. That's how we move forward. This is uh, a long time coming uh, and I just want you to know it's a miracle for me to be sitting here talking to you right now. I'm, I'm, you know, according to the courts, I should be in a cell right now. And so if you can't see the things have changed after seeing this interview, uh, you just can't see. The one and only Kwame Kilpatrick. He currently lives in the state of Georgia where he is planning to launch Movemental Ministries on January 20th. We'll have a link on our website at fox2detroit.com. Josh Landon, Fox 2 News.